Hello Troublemakers, I am back! Did you miss me? What do you mean no? As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of the Hype House. I just believe the Hype House showcases the very best of what humanity has to offer. After all, the Hype House is just a collection of the most attractive and talented and attractive people that the world has to offer. And I don't think anything that I've said thus far can be denied, so let's move on. But because we only see Hype House members through their TikTok accounts, it's like we're not getting into them enough, you know? Like, we want, I want to see behind the scenes. I want to know more about their lives. There's so much more that we could be uncovering. That's where the reality show steps in. Netflix says, hold on a second, let me just pull back the curtain. The reality show, which I've watched all eight episodes, twice. Yes, that's- it's true. We get to see all the intimate details and all the important stuff that you would never see otherwise. You know what my- my favorite chips are? Uh. Cheddar and sour cream. If it weren't for this reality show, would I know what her favorite kind of chip was? I would doubt it. That's the information that I need. I'm not sarcastic either at all. Chip knowledge is very important to me. <laughs> As a massive fan though of the Hype House, I feel like I'm not just like defining what the Hype House is well enough. You know, like I don't wanna, I don't wanna like give you the wrong impression and make you think less of it. So let's let the creator of the Hype House describe what the Hype House is. Hype House is like a social media collective that is also kind of like an incubator. We've launched people like Charlie and Dixie and Addison. Being a part of this brand really helped blow everyone up. Exactly like he said, it's an, it's an uh, incubator. Kind of like an incubator. Which is, if you don't know what an incubator is, I do, but if you don't, then I will look it up for you. An incubator is an enclosed apparatus providing a controlled environment for the care and protection of premature or unusually small babies. Obviously, I knew that. So what he's trying to say is that the Hype House takes care of small babies, which is actually kind of frighteningly accurate. <laughs> he's using fancy words, incubator. Like, we don't need to get that smart here. Like, let me, let me tell you what the Hype House is. The Hype House is just a collection of white creators who want to link up and be white together. Okay? New members come in with their audience, and then they cross-pollinate with all the other audiences inside the house, and then they eventually move on and become actresses and make movies that literally move me to tears. Oh, I am so sorry. You must miss her. Why am I getting emotional? I'm getting emotional. Yes, indeed, I have cried at a TikTok Netflix movie. Why I was crying is irrelevant but it, it moved me to tears. That's an undeniable fact. But unfortunately, the Hype House has its share of problems, and that's what the Netflix show is about. The big problem that the members of the Hype House have is that they live in a multi-million dollar mansion that's paid for by brand deals, but no one wants to do the brand deals. We really don't have that much to do, and we still suck at it. You have to do one video a month, that's it. To live in a mansion. Which you might think, like, why are they just being so lazy, you know? But ask yourself, would you want to do a bang energy spot? Hmm. Why are me and Michael the only two people in this room that ever have posted on the Hype House willingly? What's the best way to do the bang bang videos? We just have to do eight a month. It really is unfortunate because the guy that kind of like, I don't know, he's like the mastermind of the, the Hype House, one of the founders, his name is fucking... Oh, Jesus, do I, you want me to remember the names? Of course, I'm a big fan, so I know, it's Thomas. As a fan, I know that. Thomas just wants to be behind the scenes. He wants to build the Hype House into a brand. The problem is... He also just wants to be everyone's friend. I love you. You're like a brother to me. And it hurts that me, him, and Alex would always say that, like, well, at least we'll always be a part of it. We'll always be around. But he's kind of bailed on all of us. And if there's, <laughs> there's like a rule in business. Don't do business with friends. The reason for that is because it, it frays relationships. Spoiler alert, that's what happens in the show. But all I do is help people. I'm just such a giver. He's treated everyone like family. He's confused on why people don't treat him the way he treats them. So Thomas wants to be everyone's friend, so he's like, hey guys, we gotta do the bang energy spots. But then all the TikTokers are like, no, <laughs> bang sucks. We make $80,000 a month and that goes towards the rent. You that's, don't that's, wanna that's post like, bang videos, like that's not your brand, I get every it. Every time I ask, even if I come up nice, hey, you wanna film this? Everyone's like, no, I don't wanna do that. And I think that's, you, you need like some sort of rigidity. Rigidness? I don't, it's January. I, it's, I'm taking the month off. I'm just recording this willy nilly, okay? Sorry, I got smart. I'm st I've been stupid. I've been stupid, okay? Don't expect me to know words now in 2020. 
Two, uh, what year is it? Fuck. So unfortunately for him, I think he's just gonna continue to find himself in this conundrum where he just, he makes friends with everybody and he's like, hey, I really need this from you. And then they're just like coked up on popularity and fan love and they're getting their own brand deals. So they're already rich. So they don't even need the hype house. So these kids didn't feel like they were famous yet, even though they had five, 10, 20 million followers when we started, but it just doesn't work anymore. Let's talk about a little honey. Lil Huddy, oh God. If there's one thing you need to know about Lil Huddy, is that this man was born to make music, he thinks. <laughs> and if you watched my Ooga Booga video where I reviewed TikTok songs, then you would know exactly how I feel about two of Lil Huddy's songs. Ooh, he hit, did not hit that at all, love it. That's part of the arc as well, is like Thomas is upset with, with Lil Huddy because Lil Huddy doesn't really want to be a part of Hype House, despite the fact that Lil Huddy helped found the Hype House. So I don't know, like we've had, there's like four times during the show, Thomas is like, hey, Huddy, like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be a part of Hype House if you wanna be a part of Hype House. And Lil Huddy's like, totally, my bad. And then he doesn't do anything different. Jason and I have had the same conversation a hundred times and I feel like nothing's changing. All right. But his music's going well. He, he actually has a rehearsal. He does a live rehearsal in front of two professional music producers. And he's like, hey guys, what do you think about my rehearsal performance? And they're like, it was okay. Yeah, let's sit down, let's discuss. How bad was it? You did okay, you did pretty good. <laughs> Keep in mind, they're being paid by Lil Huddy to be there. You did okay. If I was being paid by a musician, I would be like, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Can I take my pants off to show you how fucking rock hard I am right now? Maybe I should keep the pants on actually. You know what? I'll... I'll keep my pants on. Because he asked them like, how how do I get, how do I improve my performance here? How bad was it? Yeah, how Tell terrible are straight. we? You guys have any notes? I think it's just having more like fun with each other. And you don't actually need to sing. Like the coolest move is to just go, I can't hear you. Have fun and sing less. That's how your singing performance will be better. There's actually a moment though where Lil Huddy, they're playing like Jenga, but with a twist where you have to do a dare that's written on one of the Jenga blocks. So we're playing Jenga, but with a twist. You can write a dare or a question. Post a thirst up on your Instagram story. Two, one, go. <laughs> he's so good at intentionally being cringy. That tells me that he knows when he's being cringy. He had to intentionally be cringy. Hold on, no, hold on. I watched the show twice and I've already forgotten. Hold on, hype house. Post a thirst up on your Instagram story. Oh no, it was just a regular thirst trap. Oh, damn it. I, I was giving him so much benefit there. Oh, I should have known too. He's got so many freaking posters of himself in his house. I feel like maybe he doesn't understand how cringy he is. Cause I felt like he was intentionally trying to be cringy, <laughs> but also no one told him to intentionally do it. So maybe I'm thinking like, no, he just he thinks it's cool. I fuck. Like, what are you, what are you doing, man? <laughs> 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 He's so good. He's so good at being cringy. Like he, he has to know. I fuck. Like get out of here. I need you to leave the room and not return. All right. I'm sick of talking about him. Let's talk about someone else. I'd love to talk about Larry and Nikita because I feel like they were kind of more made for reality television. They're more unfiltered. Everyone else feels like they're they're playing a little bit more safe. They want to protect their brand. They just want to show you how fucking sad they are. Everyone's telling you every five minutes about how their fucking dad died. And I never really had a childhood. Growing up in Stockton, I was like trapped in a bubble. No one to collaborate with. And a lot of the other people like myself have come from difficult home lives. School was stressful for me. I, I didn't really fit in. I was raised in a very toxic household. Because I have a lot of built up drama from my father and my mother. But Larry and Nikita are like, they're willing to dive into topics and like stir up some drama. The problem is their big arc in the show is like them fighting each other because what was like Larry's manager said something like Nikita forced him to go to a party that when he had COVID and Larry's like, no, I had COVID. It was Nikita's fault. Nikita's like, no, Larry went to a party by himself. I and they just talk and they talk and I don't care. I don't care. It is the stupidest plot I've ever seen in my entire life. You might have got too intoxicated and like somehow forced Larry to come knowing he had COVID. Like Larry's manager went behind his back and blamed Nikita for inviting him to a party. I like, I just, I, I don't care. So let's talk about Vinny. I never had a desire to be on social media. Vinny is probably my favorite because he seems self-aware. I blew up because of thirst traps. It is kind of awkward for me to make them. I don't even like to look at them. I don't want to see my cringy self. I think my favorite thing about Vinny is that he's uh, very obviously on steroids because he just gets angry out of nowhere. 
Oh no, I just hit everything and everybody. But well, right now, I swear to God, if one person says something off to me, it doesn't matter who it is, I will probably punch them. So it's awkward because there's like no setup to that. There's no like something's going on with Vinny. It's just like they cut to Vinny being like silent and he's like, I'm gonna fucking punch someone right now. Do not look at me because I will murder your firstborn if you do, okay? So just try to avoid eye contact right now. And then they cut away and it, like we don't address it again except when they have a, a hype house meeting. If you guys see me like being like mad or like stressed, I'm just really tired. Personal stuff, okay? Is that normal? Huh? Are you normally mad like that? Yeah. So it's creepy. Vinny's actually training for a fight, which makes me think that's why, uh, that's why he's taking steroids. I know like Bryce Hall talked about like doing steroids. So it's like, it's in their world where like s several of them are connected to steroids. So it would not shock me at all if someone training for a fight that's a, not drug tested or very lately drug tested is taking steroids. But I respect the fact that he hates what he does. There's something about someone doing something cringy and then being like, I hate that I'm cringy, but it works. So sue me. So instead he just goes on Twitch and plays video games. Let's talk about the end of the show. Cause I'm probably the only one who watched the, the end. There's no way someone sat through like two episodes and was like, I'm gonna continue this. So I gotta be the only person that watched it twice. In the second to last episode, the founder of the Hype House, Thomas, like he, he really wants to build this into a business, but he realizes like, this is draining. I am having a miserable time. Plenty of content houses haven't worked. Maybe it just doesn't work. I think I've lost hope. I think it's just time to shut it down. So that's kind of like the build up to episode seven and there's episode eight. Now, if you, if you understand how TV shows work, you know that Netflix would want to make a season two. They want to leave the door open for it. So you're like, okay, Hype House isn't going to shut down. That's obviously a misdirect. So when he's like, oh, we're going to end the Hype House, I'm expecting the last episode, he's going to call a group meeting and then it's going to be like the Wolf of Wall Street. You know, the scene where... Leonardo DiCaprio is like, he's, he's supposed to step down from his position and he's like, I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. And everyone goes wild. I expect that to be the arc because then it tricks viewers. Reality television is so good at manipulating viewers. So when they talk about like, oh, we're going to end the hype house as a viewer, you're supposed to be like, oh no, I, I didn't realize I loved it so much. Now it's going to be gone forever. And then they're like, no, just kidding. We're coming back. And you're like, oh, thank God. I need the hype house in my life. But then as the, as the last episode went on, they just, they never did any of that. Lil Huddy finally is like, okay, I'm leaving the hype house. That's why I don't know if it makes sense to like be a part of the business. So it's like, okay, the, the premier member of the hype house, the last one left because all the other big ones have left. He's like, yeah, I'm thinking about leaving and I'm going to. So he's gone and then Thomas is like, yeah, this the Hype House is just depressing me. Are you happy? No, not at all. I feel like 24 seven. I don't have anything I enjoy doing. I think if I could remove one stressor from my life and that possibly being Hype House would make me feel a lot better. And as I'm watching that, I'm like, good. I'm glad they're shutting Hype House down because no one's having a good time. All the people in the Hype House don't want to make Hype House videos and they don't want to be a part of Hype House. And then literally five minutes left after being like the Hype House shutting down is far and away the best decision that we could make. Thomas just comes in with a voiceover out of nowhere like, you know what? We'll keep it going. I've been stressing a lot lately about what to do with this brand. Yeah. I Maybe I shouldn't end it. I don't know why they didn't orchestrate it because reality television is orchestrated. I don't know why they didn't get together and be like, Thomas is like, hey guys, I'm thinking about ending the Hype House and everyone got together and hugged and they're like, no, we can't lose this thing about all the good memories and they rehash all the good stuff. Because they had the event, they had a prom. They're like, let's throw a big event. That could have been the announcement for like ending Hype House. And then everyone get, gets together and they're like, no, we can't end it. And they're like, okay, we'll keep going. But instead it's just like some quick slow-mo and then it's like, yeah, we'll keep it going. Okay, that wasn't emotionally impacting at all. But then, <laughs> Mr. Act number two, two minutes left to go in the show. And all of a sudden, Thomas comes in six months later and he's like, yeah, you know what? We are ending it because uh, people are moving out and yeah, so we're going to end it. But also maybe we'll come back in the future. We've had a discussion that it doesn't make sense for us to all live together anymore. We got a lot planned, so stay tuned. So like my line of thinking is, why didn't you just change the structure of the last episode? You have like a ton of footage. Why not change the narrative instead of trying to force it into being like, no, we'll continue. Let the narrative be like, okay, we're gonna end the hype house gradually and nicely. Instead of being like, we're gonna end it. Ah, fuck it, we'll keep going. And then being like, no, we're gonna end it again. <laughs> why wouldn't you just change the whole narrative structure of the last episode? Closing thoughts. I, I just, I think it's funny how <laughs> the hype house, they spent the first part of the last episode talking about all the other failed content houses. 
and how the Hype House was different and better. Clubhouse, don't even get me started on this Clubhouse. They left in shambles, but that's not my team. The Hype House is fully and solely ours. There's no agents, there's no investors, and that's why Hype House has lasted so long. And then the Hype House ends up like all the other houses, so it wasn't different or better. And I think just the problem is there's not enough structure, and the Hype House, it, it's a brand that didn't keep itself cool enough to get people to want to continue to be a part of it. Like Addison Ray, the D'Amelios, they're like, as soon as they got big, they're like, the Hype House isn't helping my brand. I'm helping the Hype House more than the Hype House is helping me. So there's no use in being a part of it. You need to build the brand to like such a cool level. That's Thomas's job. He wants to be a behind the scenes kind of guy. It's his job to make the brand so cool that every TikToker wants to be a part of it, no matter how big they are. And then you got to keep that talent. They don't have to be in the house. You just have to organize it so that they stay a part of the community that you're building. If I was Thomas and I was running the Hype House, I would have definitely um, beat some some of the members. Record the bang video, poof. I also would have branched off. I would have branched off and tried to bring in other talent outside of just like Thirst Trap TikTokers. I would have tried to branch into Twitch members. I would have taken a percentage too. He's, he prided himself on like, I don't take a percentage of, of their cuts. I don't take a percentage of anybody. But I think it's good that you take a percentage and then you take that money and you put it instead of getting a multi-million dollar house for them to live in. Take that money and you put it into surrounding each of these TikTokers with like an elite team who can facilitate brand deals and not just brand deals, but like you can get them like acting managers. You can help branch off into different areas. You could also like branch into gaming, Twitch. You could get other online creators. There's a lot of really cool things that he could have done to, to build a hype house into something cooler. And I guess I don't know a ton about the hype house. That's not true. I'm, a, I'm the number one biggest fan. I know everything. But I think he spent so much time trying to massage egos and get people just to do the basics. Like that, that can't be your job. You gotta be a vision person. Like where is Hype House gonna be in five years? How do we expand this into an empire? Anyways, uh, I think this is a good time to let everyone know I am going to start a content house. It's gonna be a uh, film commentary house. So every, all the film commentary <laughs> movies are constantly playing and, and then the creators are constantly just watching movies and talking about them. That's gonna be the house. There's gonna be a television on every single wall. We're bringing Alex Myers, Trin. They're gonna, that's where we start. Billy Binges, what you up to man? Let's come on in. <laughs> Anyways, that's, that's it. I, I had to rant about this, you know, like, I know there's gonna be a thousand videos on YouTube talking about the Hype House reality television show, which is what the show wants. They want people talking about it, negative, positive, it doesn't matter. The more people talking about it, the more viewership it's gonna get, the more chance there's another season, which means there's more money, more clout that goes into the Hype House, the whole ecosystem. And we're a part of it. I play my role. All right, that's it. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Doodles. So sad. How is this all the people we live with? Well, everyone else got like too famous.